Yo, yo, what's up, people? It's your boys, Black and Blue, and you tuned in back again to the Black and Blue podcast. What's up, homeboy? What's going on with you, bro? Not much, not much, man. Talk about a few interesting articles this week. First of all, the MTV Music Awards. Um, I should say MTV Movie and TV Awards. <laughs> the big award this one, um, Surviving R. Kelly <laughs> wins Best um, Documentary. And what, what, what I thought was, I guess it shouldn't be funny, but they were holding up a popcorn trophy. Some of the women that were involved in the movie and some of the accused, they said, this isn't just a trophy to us. It speaks to the cultural impact that it generated from the documentary. This team believes in the power of numbers. The only thing about that holding a popcorn trophy kind of um, <laughs> negate a lot of shit to make it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, well, I think the I think the trophy was real fitting because I don't even consider that a documentary. Uh, mm -hmm. I saw it as a it kind of like came off as like a reality show to me. Like those, I mean, you think like I mean, we both watched some documentaries recently. And that wasn't the same vibe we got when you watched the R. Kelly. I won't say it wasn't a documentary. It was more like a um. And then the, doc and then the documentary, the documentary, but but you know, it was filled with allegations, like right, right. It's more unproven, so like a lot of tabloid scandal. Yeah, well, we not we not giving R. Kelly no type of pass. No, nah, I don't like R. Kelly at all. But that, but that wasn't a documentary. That was a messy series that that women loved mostly. Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't learn anything. Like I said, I started listening to R. Kelly two decades ago. Like, you know, um, yeah, you know, here's what I'm offended by. You know, now now I'm thinking about it. Okay. Everybody was watching the R. Kelly thing, right? You know, yes. and, and like, women were eating it up. You know what I'm saying? But on the same note, this past week, I had another a whole bunch of other group of women, and I'm like, and I'm not restricting to this women, but those are the ones I've seen. I'm pretty sure men involved too. Okay. But I watch when they see us. Right mm -hmm. to me, that was a and then that you know, there wasn't a documentary, it was a good series based off events that happened in real life, correct? But I saw a whole lot of a lot of women saying they couldn't watch that because it was because that's a horror movie that, and that happened in real life. So, like, my thing you can watch all the, the bull tabloid BS, but you can't watch some real shit though, you know what I'm saying? So, you wouldn't call, consider the R. Kelly stuff and the victims real shit when you say that, the, as a whole, no. Why not? No, because uh, they were victims. You don't think they were preyed upon? Uh, I think it's. I think it's, I think they're victims of more of this R. Kelly. They're victims of the parents who own the series. Oh yeah, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I feel they're like capitalizing on it. It's almost mm -hmm. like a woman get. It's almost like if a woman getting raped, right? But he interviews the rapist. The rapist is the headliner for the documentary. He giving his account. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that would be off. So I, I feel like in uh, and you listen to a lot of these parent stories, it's almost as if they're giving up their kids to R. Kelly. For fame and star. Yeah. yeah they they you know play the line out. True. And they they, they looking fresh and throughout the whole series. Like like well, yeah, say, we talked about that before. Right. I'm just talking about the aspect of why the series is so popular now that it's receiving awards when they're actual crime. Sort of like when they see us when it actually happened, you kinda of forgot about it. I also believe that the the documentary worked in R. Kelly's benefit, and here's why I say this. Well, looking at it, like they still trying to hit him for child support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's why. But here's what I'm saying: they changed the narrative because you know we know R. Kelly as being this, this pedophile, and you know, like you know, with dealing with young underage girls. But I feel like that that narrative was hijacked by the the women of age he was dating. You know, they were young. Yeah, eighteen, nineteen, with a control. It's debatable, you know what I'm saying? But you change the narrative to a lot of women sympathize with that because there's a lot of women who had grown ass boyfriends in high right. school. You know what That's I'm saying? True. And I uh, we just saw that on the shot. Yes, <laughs> sure did. You know what I'm saying? So to me, they kinda like changed the narrative mm -hmm. to the point that like, people were so caught up about these girlfriends of his and not the, the uh, 14, 15 year old girls that were really victims. I mean, they're all in the sense of victims. Right, right. But I feel like the documentary, this documentary, quote unquote, it didn't do no justice to the, to the underage girls um, that, was, that was affiliated with him. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. and, oh, yeah, and, then, and then compared to, I had to look up the other documentaries they won against, too. This the, 
You know, I was just curious. Like, you want best out to get the documentary against who? You know what I'm saying? Who was they up against? <laughs> so they had, so they were up against this one called McQueen, and with this, uh, I guess this, this uh, the long like this very very famous fashion designer, and he changed the game. I want to guess in the eighties. I'm not familiar with him. Um, of course, I didn't watch the documentaries, but what I did was I looked up the names and I watched the trailer. You know, and I was like, they look really good. And I was about 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, like everything, right? And there was another documentary on there um, about a group of skateboarders. And it was documented over a 10 year period, 10 years. And, you know, from, you know, they had a, they had a young white guy and a young black boy and the things they were dealing with growing up and how they uh, resorted to skateboarding to get away from their problems. Okay. Looks really good. Again, 100% Rotten Tomatoes. Now, of course, I ain't saying Rotten Tomatoes is the all the, the end all be all, but Rotten Tomatoes do gather scores from a whole bunch of different critics. So you to maintain a hundred percent score for months later, that's hard to pull off. And as a and just put it in comparison to something, let's put it with a uh, Avengers Endgame. Mm-hmm. I know Avengers was a great movie. A lot of people love that movie. It's in ninety four. So you thought we had the documentary sitting there hundred percent, and they had beat out by this tabloid mess, this R. Kelly series. I just like okay, interesting, yeah, interesting. Yeah, interesting. I, I had to look deeper in that. I don't like that. Also, um, at, at the MTV Movie and TV Awards, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta won the best reality show, and um, Nick Cannon, you know, he nabbed best host for host wild and not. What you think about mm-hmm. Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, man? I ain't know people still watching that. <laughs> I ain't know it was still on. You know, I guess people love their reality shows. I guess they do. Yeah, well, shout out to Nick Cannon because I do like uh, Wild and Out. Um, I just watch the clips I see on social media. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, I, just, I can, or on YouTube, like the old clips on YouTube, so I can't sit here and tell you I sit here and watch the show in its current season. But um, but I did I did see interesting interviews with um, the white boy they have on there, Jacob. Okay. And, uh, and it was funny because he showed up on a whole different show that Nick was hosting. And I guess Nick saw him there. I guess uh, America's Got Talent. He was on there. Okay. So I guess, I guess that's when they first met. And then, then Nick brought him over to Wild Out. So, okay. I mean, so it's always good to see Nick, man. Because Nick's like he's always helping out people, you know? Yeah, yeah. Looking yep. out for, for, for good talent. Yeah, yeah. Nick going to be, um, I think he's he going to be a radio host, uh, morning radio. I think it's um, Power in LA. I think one of the stations, major stations out there, he's going to be a radio host out there. So, salute to that. Yeah. Yo, about. man. Speaking of crickets, we heard a lot about this R. Kelly thing. But um, we covered this late last year, previously on one of the older part, old our older shows. Um, woman named Alicia Johnson, she's an AKA, and she was basically sort of they they were saying she was like the madam of a prostitution ring for young college girls and business people throughout the Fort Valley um community. But she ended up getting off the forty nine year. She was um. She, Johnson was the only woman di- indicted, along with six men, on pimping and prostitution-related charges that maintain young female college students use sex to pay for initiation fees. At the time of the events, Johnson served as the university special events director and was a college advisor for the sorority. The resulting investigation involved the Georgia Bureau of Investigations, the state's highest law enforcement agency, and national and made national news. The national office of AKA suspended the chapter, but later reinstated it after um, internal investigation. Um, basically, they said on Monday, June 17th, she learned her punishment. In a plea agreement, she pled guilty to charges of prostitution, not running a sting or a prostitution ring. She was sentenced to five years probation, a $1,000 fine, and 100 days of house arrest. The agreement also stipulates that she will testify against the men accused of pandering and sodomy in the case, according to the AJC. Is that a, is, this, is this a double stand? We just got finished. Yeah. We rolled on Kelly for months, months, and months. Is Straight this a double standard or what? I'm just I'm just saying. If that, was, if, they, if that was a man doing that, I'd be seeing women outraged everywhere right now. Hey. And you know, and I mentioned this article, and like I ain't heard nothing from I ain't hear nothing from the feminist movement. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Crickets. Like, it been quiet as hell. She got off. And, uh, yeah, I didn't even read about the part that the chapter got reinstated. That chapter's just been shut down. 
Like that's some that's some dirty. Well, I don't know if you can shut the whole. I mean, because it's. Hell it, yeah. I say that because there's other young ladies coming in after. I mean, that's it doesn't one, matter. That, that's one bad. You know, you can't say tear down the whole organization. But hell, no. <laughs> we just, seen we seen them shut down organizations off campus. Off. Hazing. They, hazing. They, okay, you are right. They get suspended. They get suspended for some years. They yeah, did they to come do. back. Thank they you. just did come back real quick. This wasn't you were off campus for, right. for 10 years for right. or nothing. And you going on the ground to play. Thank and all you. This. They brought them right back. Okay. Right back. You, you called that one. Okay. All right, all right, all right. They were suspended for a year. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, like she was, and then she's the main one recruiting these chicks and giving and, it to and them. And she got off on prostitution. And the chapter still survives after all that? Oh yeah, man. It's a That's double a, standard. Yeah, man. And she gonna testify against the men, so the of men gonna get the worst of it, and not say everybody wrong. We just said it. Be fair across the board. Yeah, absolutely, man. Be fair across the yeah, board. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah, and it, it just to me that means to me mm-hmm. by the chapter being reinstated so quickly and mm-hmm. not even taking a year off. Man, that that camp is sticking scandal right now. Cause like, man, what did AKA have on administration to be? But I'm thinking, you know what? What I'm thinking, money. <laughs> they probably paid off the school. Like, yo, I'm sorry about what happened. Here's some change. Let the kids stay on campus. That's all that was. That was a, that was just probably a little payout right there. Wow. And that's sad. That's sad. And I ain't really hear anybody talking about it, man. But I, I couldn't imagine because you know, got to think about I me. Mean, yeah, these girls probably over 18, but they're still learning to be adults. They just fresh from high school. Trying to be a part of this, and these know. grown established men tricking. So let's let's yeah, call it let's yeah. call it what it is. Yeah, let's yeah. call let's yeah, call yeah. it let's call yeah. it what it is. Well, you know we call it education game. They, you know, you know they getting jumped in. You know what I'm saying? Pain. Well, they said initiation. I guess I don't know how high those fees were, but damn. Yeah, those fees get kind of high. They are pretty high in all in those uh, sororities and fraternities. How bad you want it? Right. Yeah, man. So well, that, well, that's the case. I've seen a lot of females too. And a lot of these organizations, I'm going to call it, they look down at a lot of um, other females who actually paid their way through school for dancing. We're mm. kind of like, well, they kind of, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to leave it there. We're yeah. going to play nice. <laughs> we're not going to be petty right now. We're not going to be petty. We just <laughs> at least not now. We'll be later in the show. At least not now. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Oh man, speaking of interesting, man, you know, all these deaths is going around and um down in Dominican Republic, man. Another guy, man, is unexplainable death, this dude named Joseph Allen, 55. He was vacationing. He passed. They say his son was coming to see him the next day. Mm. And sad another sad situation. What what you think going on, man? You think it's poison or liquor? Is it is like what is going on in the DR, yo? All that I've been reading, they say that's a possibility because they said uh they did investigation two years ago, mm-hmm. and um, they, I guess, the police raided some spots, and they found, like, a lot of illegal substances being pushed as alcohol, you know what I'm saying? So, they're saying that maybe that's related because, uh, you know, it's funny, because they, they wouldn't even confirm if all the victims was at the bar, but we, we assume they all happened after leaving the bar, you know? Right, right. So, they, you know, of course, you're on vacation, you drink and have a good time, I'm assuming, you know, so, yeah, I think it's something to drink. Uh, I just want to know... Who's doing it? If it's like, is somebody you making fake alcohol as a way to save money, or is it some type of like intentional attack on tourists? Right, right. That's true. I, you know, that's what I want to know. But I just find it kind of weird because I'm, I'm assuming a country like that makes so much revenue from tourism. Why you want to yeah, jeopardize you think, that? You would think. You would think. You would think. But I don't know. That's interesting. Either way, you should be going to the DR for vacation. <laughs> yeah, man. That's true. Yeah. I mean, it's like not even know really what to make of that, man. Yeah, that's scary stuff. Yeah, yeah. What's going on with your girl Kamala, man? She seems like she's getting a lot of feedback from the brothers, man. Yeah, uh, what the article uh, we were reading about? That uh, she can uh, she have a hard time connecting to the to blue, the blue collar black male? Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, um, we caught an article in the root where they were talking about that. Um, well, we're not surprised. <laughs> I mean, for one, um, I, I, and then, like, I remember the article mentioning how, how it would be very hard for her because of her background. And, you know, she married to a fluent Jewish guy on top of that. Okay. So, you like, so you're not even married to a brother. So, it's like, what can we... And then, because your background as a DA, you know, we you know what you do out in Cali. So, 
Like, how can you expect some black men to go out and go for your drugs? Yeah, they're saying she had a lot to do with the three strikes laws back in the day and everything. So, you know, they face this. She's felt, feeling the backlash. It feel like a lot of black males won't vote for her. But we'll see. But, you know, but here's my, I have a, big, I have a question for you, though. Mm -hmm. Even if, whether they vote for her or not, do the black male vote matter to, to win an election, you think? If we voted in masses, yes. But I'm not just talking about for her. I mean, in general, if it was a candidate we found honestly felt behind, I believe so. But again, I haven't seen that candidate yet to make anybody come out like that. But Rock was an anomaly. Now it's like we didn't have that. What did we get from that? Who's next is championing for our rights and for our causes. And I say that because you know a lot, a lot of um people that were locked up were getting their rights back to vote and stuff. But then even with them getting them back to vote, it's like, who am I voting for? Because it's still the same system. So what you think about that? Well, yeah, yeah, that's how I feel. I feel like the vote doesn't matter regardless because, mm -hmm. well, one, we already know, you know, the our vote is not the one they, they collect anyway from the electoral, electoral college anyway. Um, but yeah, but I don't feel like our vote would count anyway because we had, we had no money. We had no power behind a dollar. And at the end of the day, politicians like to get paid. And so I think, and that's why, not just her, mm -hmm. I think that's why all candidates don't really uh, cater to black males. I mean, cause what can we put in their pocket? You know, well, to me, to, to me, it is a, it's all about um, their impression that the system works, but I don't think it works. All right, right. So I mean, so at the end of the day, I don't think it matter, and I don't think she's losing sleep over it. I don't think so either. No. Yeah. But I do think she's losing sleep because it's a, uh, it's votes that would count. She needs every every vote she can get. So yeah, I, so, right, I, well, so, so I won't sit here and say she doesn't look and say, okay, this is a vote that I don't want. I would not say that, especially as a black woman running for office. She's going to need the uh, black male vote, black female vote, and, my, and the women vote and in general. Now, can she, but not to say um, white men and other people won't vote for her, but then for her to win, that's pretty much what she's going to have to pull from. So she's going to need so at she, least so the she, white women to So she definitely vote. needs it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. At, at minimum. I think she'll need. And like I said, the race is, is very early. I mean, the the general election not until next year. Right. And like the Democratic Party is still very crowded right now. They just had a debate with like twenty different candidates. Right. 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 So it's still early. Um, and you know, I do believe that she'll be one of the ones to get through the summer. I think she'll mm -hmm. make enough money to last for a while. Oh yeah, I think she's gonna be in it. I do. I think I think they try to make her to be like the Black Clinton, like Hillary Clinton, in, in a sense. Um, but at the same time. I still think, unfortunately, Trump's going to win again. I think Trump is going to win again. Because I haven't seen and I, and I see, I see the Black Hillary aspect the same way where you know with the Clintons and incarcerating um, black men and with, with you know, said it said it, but they they get over that real quick. And I think the same thing happened with Kamala. You know, with her situation with that, people don't care about us. No, nah, yeah. not at all. And speaking of Karen, um. You know, Georgia been in the news for the last month with this abortion thing and pretty much, you know, forcing females where they can't get an abortion. You know, Tiffany Haddish, she's the latest artist, the champion, and she, she just canceled a performance here in Atlanta and said she won't be performing anytime soon here until that ban is lifted. Just think about that, man. Netflix, a few other people down with that cause. Where you see that going? Well, first of all, the, the law that not in effect right now. Like, it's all, I mean, it's a good... They say it's a good chance it can be pushed. It's been passed through one of the, you know, through the system. But mm -hmm. if it fully passes, it won't be affected until next year. One, two. I don't think Tiffany did for politics. I think, <laughs> I think she can sell tickets. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, I think it is. I mean, what we, we, thing? you ain't read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, like, I, 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 I wow. never heard Tiffany had sell out a stand up show. You know what I mean? Wow. Uh, I even saw somebody say they saw her tickets for seventy dollars, and then shortly after they were going to get rid of tickets for twenty five dollars on Groupon. Wow! And probably still gonna push it because like, and you know, Atlanta is a rough city to perform in anyway. Well, hold on. I won't say even though Atlanta might be a rough city to perform in. I bench. I'm a comedy person. Like I go to Atlanta comedy. is a comedy. I, city. I know. I know. I go to comedy shows. I go to big shows. I go to small shows. Like little comedy clubs. I, I mess with them all. 
So I won't say she can't sell out. Okay, yeah, I done seen, okay, I done seen, I, I done seen a whole lot of people that I would be surprised. Man, they sold that out. So I won't sit I, I, here and say that she won't sell yeah, out. I, think, I will uh, not say that at all. I, yeah, I think Atlanta is rough on music, but yeah, comedy is a lot of comedy that goes on. Yeah, I think she can, can sell tickets. I mean, um, I don't know if she recovered from that show that she did in Miami. Like, was it New Year's that she bombed? Well, I ain't heard about any any concerts then, but like they said, no, they they said doomed. but they said all comedians go through that, and I don't know whether or not she has been performing. So, yeah, I mean, I think she's a good actress. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, but but uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, Cat Williams said it from the get go. Like, you know, that's the difference between being an actress and a comedian, right? You know what I mean? And I and we've seen that now. That's I think, true. you know, to be honest, so yeah, so I think. Uh, I think she couldn't sell tickets, and she covered up wow. using the heartbeat law because um, that's a lot. Yeah, uh, I, I I won't ride with you on that just for the sake of saying that even if she didn't sell out tickets, and if they canceled the show, that ain't necessarily the biggest loss in the world. That might yeah, be that yeah. might be a kid. That might be somebody taking twenty dollars from me or you. Yo. Like that be that ain't the end of the world. I'm not gonna sell around. Yo, like that. Juicy Smollett whooped his own ass and he wrote that thing out. <laughs> yeah, he could, well, he could have kept a, a simple L and moved on, but he didn't. Right, 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 right. He overreacted, and I think, and I think this could be the case of uh, Tiffany's team overreacting, turning out able to sell. Wow, I see the hate. <laughs> I see I'm just, the hate. I'm just not putting out facts right now, brother. Yeah. I, I I don't you know now as far as and as far as the other studios like I heard about Netflix and you know George Films about doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that hype either. I, I man, since when Hollywood is moral? Come on now, you know what I'm saying? But you're born by the abor- by abortion law. But well, if you just saw that all last year we had the whole thing with Weinstein and, and whatnot. They were going on for years, but now all of a sudden you want to be all high and mighty on the pedestal. I just all money game. If Jordan be like, yo, we get an additional tax break. All right, well, shit, you do, go ahead and do the Black Panther 2 and 3 over here now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay, like, okay. Nobody said it on high ground like that over the law. They got the balls in every state. That's true. That's true. Speaking of jacked up, man, you know, the boy Holman came to the rescue again a few weeks ago in um, Phoenix, man. It was, they, it, was a, it was a black family and a family dollar or something, a 99 cent store, and the child took out took a doll. Police followed these people home. A nine nine cent doll. Nine nine cent doll. Guns full blazing. Charging everything. And it, it was a totally abusive power. Even if the child did take the doll. Just you you putting guns on people for a ninety nine cent this is this is this is how much you this is what you think of black people because this this is a racist thing at this point. All the apologies and everything, they can keep that. If you're that scared to be a fucking police officer, you need to find another line of duty. Cause there's no reason to put no gun on nobody for that. And like I say, Jay Z, um, he put his money salute the billionaire hole. He hired some attorneys, you know, to go down there and see see for you know. He been known to do things like that. So what's up with that, man? That shit crazy. What you thought about that? I didn't good look for Jay Z to send somebody down there. I mean, I appreciate a man of his stature. Probably keep lawyers on payroll anyway. Mm-hmm. They probably not working on anything. Like yo, bro, keep yourself busy. <laughs> right, right. Get out of Phoenix, <laughs> hit out some people. Mm-hmm. Uh, interesting enough, I think in the city, I think they have a black woman police chief, and uh, uh, and they apologize and everything too, and then you know trying to get to the bottom of it. And the couple said they didn't want that apology because it seems like they sent it. They said yeah. it on the news, but they ain't really come yeah, and give it to them. you. Like, what can you do to that? Yeah, you still can't justify what was Pam. the reason. Reason, yeah. What? What? You can't even justify the reason for going all out like that. It, it, it's just too much. It's an abuse of power. And speaking of um, an abuse of power, and since we stand on this political bru- um, police brutality thing, you know the NYPD union they're saying Eric Garner did not die of a chokehold. I guess they don't want to hit hit would get hit with another lawsuit and have to pay out. They basically saying because he was overweight. If anybody would have put him in a bear hug, he would have died. Ain't that the most fucked up shit? All right. <laughs> right. That's so sad. I mean, what, 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 I mean, what, 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 what you think of them calling that out, bro? Well, you we already know that's bull. I think this is a war to a lawsuit. But it's unfortunate they still treat them like, like trash, even in the press. 
after his, who would have been a year or two after his death now, and they still don't not recognize him as a human being, and realize they escalated the situation far more than they should have. Yeah. They made no wrongdoing. And then, remember a few years ago, man, in Miami, it was a, um, a special needs um, person, and he had a toy truck in his hand. And somebody said he had a gun. And the guy that worked, um, Charles Kinsey, I guess he, he worked at the uh, at the home or whatever where the guy was. He laid down on the ground, put his hands up. He talking to the police saying, hey, he don't have a gun. He work, he, I work in the middle, uh, and, and, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the home where the young man was at. He's not violent. He, you know, he got a toy in his hand. And they shot his ass anyway. 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 He got some money. That's why that went away and you ain't heard or not. Hmm. But the cop himself, he was acquitted of attempted manslaughter. And they say he shouldn't have been charged to begin with. So, so the hand is up. Don't Lay shoot. Down. And then you shot him. Anyway. You shot the, the man leg. anyway. You shot the man anyway. And they ask you why you did it. You say, oh. I don't know. <laughs> the fuck? That means you need to go to jail then if you don't know why, if you don't know yeah. why you did it. Right. I mean, what can we do, brother? Right. <laughs> I don't know. I come when we go to jail, we ain't never been to jail. But when you go to jail, we say, I don't know. They don't believe us. No, right. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> for, the, for the most bullshit of thing. And um, speaking of um, putting your money where your mouth is, and like I said, Jay-Z sent some lawyers down to take a look into a situation. You know, those people probably couldn't fight on their own. Um, 21 Savage just donated $25,000. To help detain immigrants, you know, to get legal counsel, you know, sort of like similar predicaments that he was in, and you know, like Jay Z came and helped him out, but you know, they was making an example out of Twenty One. His shit was all kinds of a million dollars stuff that really wouldn't count, you know. Yeah, paying it forward. Yeah, man. But you know, the immigration and custom enforcement when they hit you, boy, they come at you and they come at you hard. What you think about Nas and Will Smith? Yeah, about the new app. They were investing in a, in an app uh, for kids to learn financial literacy. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I honestly, I, I sure. I mean, I think it's a good idea. I just want to see um, when they say something like that. That usually means it could be part of a, a, a venture capitalist group. Right. Exactly. You know exactly. So, but it's still, it, it, you know, it's something and, that, something yeah. that they're very doing. Um, yeah, I, 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 I want to see the app exactly because. Uh, I mean, they gave very scarce details on the app. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I know they can, they can control what kind of money the kids spend and you know where that type of thing. But uh, I'm, I'm waiting to hear the details when it gets developed of how exactly they, are they teaching them financial literacy. Okay, know? that's all I want to know because like cause, you know with Twenty One Savage, you know I like his uh, bank account program. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And I think kids are learning about interest rates and, and moving around money a little bit more. So I'm curious to hear how they're gonna do that. Um, how they gonna do that with his app? Okay, okay, okay. And your boy Nas, speaking of him, um, he actually about to release a children's book across called "I Know I Can." You know, to they know to inspire the young the young youth to go out and get it, man. You need stuff like this at a developmental age and stuff. So much respect to him on that yeah. too. So like a few weeks ago, man, we had a, a father that went viral when he was having a little conversation with his son man you know that made all types of news well now um Denzelton and Kingston Pryor actually um dude is a comedian too you know him and his um son they just scored a, a Denny's commercial with that think about that man black fatherhood man it's a, it's a nice little look Denny's still trash <laughs> <laughs> but good look for the, for the for the daddy and son right 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 <laughs> they ain't gonna eat there but yeah get the check I mean, that's the, you can go viral, get some money off of it. That's true, that's true, that's true. They did it right. That's true. Kids didn't take some notes. That's true. All right. Yeah, man, we know we checked, I checked out a few movies this weekend. First of all, man, I saw The New Men in Black. I took my daughter to see that. Uh, I really like the 2019 version. You don't have to watch the, 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 the past greats with Will Smith and stuff to come in. It's almost like a new wave that a new generation can enjoy. And still go back. And same way you can watch Star Wars now, but you still don't have to, but you still gonna have to you would go back and watch the originals mm -hmm. too, but you don't have to just fall back into it. So I thought that was excellent. And then also, man, I seen um 
I checked out Shaft, man, with um Jesse Usher. That's my man from Survivor's Remorse. Of course, with the great Sam Jackson and Richard Roundtree. I really liked it a lot, you know. It, it, everybody said it didn't have the Shaft mystique, but it did. But it brought in the 2019 because a lot of these gangsters use their mind now, and that's the young Shaft with the computer technology and he know how to get it stuff. But you know, he still can throw hands and shit like his pops and stuff. So I thought that was good. You was been in the last shaft with Sammy Jackson? Do you remember the last yeah. shaft? Yeah. I will say no, but I also will say they're not comparison because the original shaft, that second shaft was kind of like a throwback and he was more built like his father. And the new shaft Shaft was raised by his mom because somebody was trying to kill the younger Shaft. So therefore, he don't necessarily got, he don't walk like this. He got more of a smooth walk. But then when you hit him, then you realize he's Shaft. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He like Shaft with an arm. Um, no tech savvy Shaft. Well, he's a tech savvy Shaft. And then when you put your hands on him, you realize <laughs> who his grandfather and daddy are. And he still got that in him. So I gave that a good look, too. Okay. And then also on Netflix, man, I was, I was peeping this joint on um, Atlanta's first black mayor, um, Maynard Jackson. It was pretty good hi history lesson for somebody that's not from Atlanta. I mean, I got a few. I got a lot of questions. I'm going to talk to a, one of some of my OGs and people that were around during that time. But I, did you check it out? How do you feel about that? I like, uh, I like, I learned a lot. I mean, being from here, um, it was good. I saw some familiar names I didn't understand before, like mm -hmm. some street names I may have seen, and you know, I couldn't quite connect the dots, and the documentary did that for me. Um, I liked it, uh, and then on the other end, on the other side, I think I was kind of disappointed by it, too. Um, and I only say that because, you know, excuse me, I didn't feel like uh, it, it was, was one-sided. It was one-sided. Yeah, you can yeah, tell the like, people's put it together, and you didn't yeah, get any pushback. It was, it was, it was, to me, it came off... At some point, the documentary came out more as a tribute to him than a documentary. But they discussed a lot of stuff, you know, like the Atlanta child murders, stuff like that. His um, his his what is his third turn when he when he faced a whole lot of pushback, and basically how he actually brought um Hartsfield Jackson International Airport to Atlanta. Yeah, you know, so he and he helped with the Olympic uh, Olympics committee too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did he did a lot of things. So anybody there, check that out. That's. Yeah, that's a that's a great view too. After yeah. you see when they see us, check out the main as well as um the black godfather Clarence Avant, music industry OG man. Shoot, put it down. He put it down. But yeah, as we close it out, man. The shy yeah. season two. I hope it's a season three. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but you know I mean they been signed for season three, but I have no reason. They signed for season three, but I was I, I I was left with more questions than answers and not because of the way the show ended, but, you know, with the whole thing going on with Jason, the sexual harassment thing, and Tiffany Boone, and then with, when Le 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 Lena gave her interview, her interview just made you question a whole bunch of stuff and what's going to come back and where is it going to just end you like know, that. A good finale make you, a good finale leave you with a bunch of questions that you want answers to. But, but this one was behind the scenes. They right, right. It's nothing on the show. show, right. But they tied into the show. But if we want to talk, but the question yeah. on the show, like, I didn't even care about the answer. Right, <laughs> right. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it wrapped up kind of, it was kind of sloppy. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how the whole scandal with Jason Mitchell interfered with the last two, three episodes. I don't know. I think them episodes were already shot. I think when all yeah. the harassment and all that came out, done. the show was already done. Which makes you question, like, so basically you already knew what the problem was. Yeah, yeah. So how are we going to address it? Yeah, I, I mean, because cause, uh, Jason Mitchell's character really carried this season. I mean, the best episodes came was centered around him, so. Well, he was the star of the show, so that's going to really make it interesting. Yeah, I mean, I like the little kids and they throw line. Um, but that's not enough to carry the show to next season. Right. You know, I mean, okay, old boy may or may not go to another school. Um, Jake may or may not be left to the streets. I mean, but that's those those are things. Is Rage that, dead? Yeah, nah, he's not dead. Well, I know when Lena said she did the interview, she said the person that she said Rage would be back. Right, yeah, yeah she, she spoiled that. She spoiled that. Now yeah. we don't know if he did or not, but that goes some of the question. Yeah. 
You know, and I liked him as an actor. I like his character. Yeah, me too. You know, because he's he's a funny drug dealer, and he's stupid. I mean, he he do some stupid shit, but he ain't the dumbest nigga either. You know what I'm saying? He's human. You right, know? right, and right. He still, and he got, and then, I mean, you know, he look older. He's still young. Yeah, but he gonna have to put some um, cocoa butter on them bullet wounds. Yeah. <laughs> so they got him. They got him good. <laughs> they got him good. Uh, I mean, I do like the Duda character. Um, yeah, like I, but I like the old bad guy in the first season too. I'm glad, but he was, but he, his season was Oh my man, done. from Twenty One Jump Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, dude, so by replacing him with Duda, that was interesting, and he's very wicked. He's a, also, I like the fact they have intelligent uh, bad guys. You know, he's not some dumb guy that's off the block. Right. You know, he's a very intelligent guys, and um, at the same time, you know, he kind of like sympathizes some of these people too because. So you in, in the streets looking at your options, you know. Um, uh, easy to look down on a drug dealer, but at the same time, you know, I've been out here. I see what the jobs are looking like. You know, what right, I'm saying? right. They ain't looking like much. You know what I mean? So like, you know, you, you stuck with you took a bunch of bad options. You choose the bad option that works for you. That's true. You know what I mean? Some stuck working in the warehouse, somewhere doing some legal work, and some do the legal game. So it's, uh, I do like the fact that shy. Offers those types, those different perspectives. They didn't make right. it so black and white. And yeah. I like what I do like about it. It shows a mending of the relationships between father and son relationships that were torn apart. I do like that aspect from different. They show a lot levels. of good men relationships, like bonding and right, whether family, good or bad, are coming together. Yeah, and I, I enjoy all that because we don't see that enough in in, uh, in our shows. Yeah, I like how Emmett Pops congratulated him on the job. He needed that. Even though he was going like he needed that. And then you, Ronnie and his dad connected. So, I mean, it was good. And then Emmett and his little boy connected. So, from them aspects like that, man, we're going to see more. We hope season three. <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen. Like, like hey. Ronnie. They're like, they don't need Ronnie for season I, I don't want to see him in season three. Oh, what, what else can you do with him at that point? <laughs> well, I mean, what else? I, I feel like he, he's at the end of the road. His own storyline. And... With his grandmother, you know what I mean? Like, what else can you do with her? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, right. I feel like that's done. That's I true. I mean, you know, the kids, there's so much you can do with the kids. Right, they right. They're growing and learning and growing. Right. Um, yeah, but that's a big gap to replace with Jason Mitchell's character. We're going right to see. Yeah. And on that note, check out Black and Blue next time. Peace.